let us start recording applications of Tunkre duality. So the first thing I'm going to write is the formula which captures the relationship between the cup product and the cap product. So this is the most important formula and uh, the idea is always this that uh, the cup product is uh, as you know when you take a cup product you just have to evaluate it on the singular complex and you get some element in the ring R. So this is the formula which you should always keep in mind or I should keep in mind yeah because after all this is taken from Hatcher so I should always keep this formula in mind. So we want to consider a cup product pairing. So what does this mean? You take a cohomology group HK and take another cohomology group HN minus K. So let us write this down. So you take the cohomology group HK and then take another cohomology group HN minus K and you want to land in R. Yeah, so this will be easy. You obviously, the manifold has uh, dimension N. So you just take uh, so when you cup phi with psi, you will be able to act on the manifold of dimension m. So phi will act on the first k vertices and the psi will act on the rest from k to n. And what you get is uh, an element in R. Yeah, Whatever you will get two elements in R, you will multiply the, them together, you get an element in R. So you should be familiar with this now if you do not or forget if you have forgotten the definition of cup product just stop here and see it again so we want to prove or we want to show that this cup product pairing is non-singular and why do we want to do that this will help us determine the structure of graded rings so basically we are able to multiply two different elements in the gridded ring so yeah so you are able to multiply say h i with h n minus i or something like that so uh, so to do that we need something called the bilinear pairing what does this bilinear pairing mean the map a to home b r so this is to be related to the above map. So take A as HK and B as HN minus K. Yeah. And write down this formula in terms of HK and H minus K. So non-singular means that these two are ISO. So now let us do some application of non-singular. Yeah. Move a bit further. So, so the cup product pairing which we just wrote on the previous slide, we say it is non-singular. So as I mentioned before in the previous slide, just replace A and B with HK and HN minus K. So it is non-singular for closed R orientable manifolds. for closed R orientable manifolds when R is a field or when R is integers and torsion is factored out. Now it's quite a mouthful to say R as a field or when R is integers and torsion in the graded ring is factored out. Basically uh, what I'm going to write from starting from the statement when R is a field and so on whatever we write here we write here precisely because we want to use the universal coefficient theorem for cohomology 
And now if you remember in the universal coefficient theorem for cohomology, we had something like the X group, the cohomology group and the dual of the corresponding homology group. So we will want to make the X term zero. And that is precisely why we want when R is a field, case one or case two, when R is integers and you just factor out the torsion, that is there is no torsion. We will re rewrite this proposition later on in uh, user friendly terms. So let us write down the proof. Now uh, we construct such a map like this. So we have to show that dual pairing and uh, we have to show that non singular mapping. So first term is HN minus K. So we have to show this homomorphisms in the ring R from HN minus K So the first map H, this comes from universal coefficient theorem and the second map which is between HN minus K and HK as you can see the map between homology and cohomology has to come from Poincare duality. Now since this is map between homomorphisms we can say it is the dual map D star. This is the dual map D star. So let us make this write everything down which we have just said. So H comes from universal coefficient theorem. And uh, this D star comes from map D which is the Poincare duality map. The kth homology cohomology group to homology group HN minus K. Okay, so this thing is clear where this map comes from. So the first thing is we want to show H is an ISO. So if R is a field or there is no torsion with R as integers, then the X term is zero and that will make H is a ISO, isomorphism. So by universal coefficient theorem, this map H is now becoming an isomorphism. So now we can see the duality pairing. We have to go from H and minus K to homomorphisms from H K M R. So you take the map, this psi, you carry it to map phi here, which maps H K M comma R to R. Yeah. So how does this map will act? It's basically nothing but a set of homomorphisms, which uh, so we have to get this pairing between uh, psi and phi. Yeah, where phi is the homomorphism from cohomology group to the ring. Yeah, we have nothing uh, special here. Again, we will just take the manifold uh, M and uh, yeah, you should think of it always in terms of uh, at least I like to think of always in terms of cup product because then manifold is of dimension N and then phi and psi are add up to the dimensions add up to N. Yeah, because phi is N minus K and then yeah, psi is n minus k and phi is k. So this is an ISO essentially because of this pairing here. Yeah, because the dimensions have to add up to n to act on m. And uh, that is what gives us the first uh, map, the first duality map. Now the according to Hatcher, the second duality map comes from the cup product being commutative. Now. Uh, yeah, I, I really don't know how that thing works, but uh, what we can say is you interchange the role of K and N minus K and uh, you can get the second duality map. 
So yeah, just change k and n minus k and you get the second duality map. So now we talk about the uh, how do we actually use the previous uh, proposition in the uh, cup product and form graded rings in the nth part. So if M is a closed connected oriented N manifold then for each element alpha in the cohomology group HK that this element alpha is of infinite order So this uh, the idea of taking it in infinite order will be clear in a minute. Uh, so there exists another element beta from H n minus k such that so alpha cup beta will be generator of the cohomology group H n. So yeah this uh, the condition on alpha that it is of infinite order and is not a proper multiple of another element uh, will be clear in a minute. So this is such that alpha cup beta is a generator of the nth cohomology group. So this is given on page 250 of Hatcher. You must uh, read it. So the proof is very simple. So since alpha is infinite order, it generates the integers. Yeah. So this integers could be one of the sum ends of the cohomology group. Yeah. Like for example, in torus, there are two copies of integers in the uh, in H one. Yeah. There is always z plus z. So alpha is infinite order means that it generates like some sum end of the cohomology group H K M comma Z. So there exists some kind of a homomorphism. Yeah, there exists a homomorphism these from these cohomology groups two integers. So basically alpha is a generator of this cohomology group. So this will get mapped to generator of integers which is 1. So this is what we have to show this non singularity pairing. So you take alpha here, take beta here and their cup product should generate integers. Now this we have already shown before. So this alpha 
come from this map uh, phi yeah and this we showed on previous slide uh, we are just replacing map psi on the previous slide with beta here yeah and this is uh, this you represented represent by alpha cup beta so such a pairing exists precisely because of the non singularity of the uh, of this map from the previous proposition but uh, let us write this down so the non singularity this alpha is basically is a representative of phi yeah so this is precisely what was done on the previous slide so because of non singularity of cup product pairing So you, uh, so you basically uh, take the cup product of phi with beta and you evaluate it on the manifold M just like we evaluate any cup product and that is the end of the story and such a non-singular pairing uh, exists by the previous proposition. Yeah that is pretty much it. We are going to rewrite everything here to make more sense for applications in a bit or probably for the next uh, next uh, video yeah uh, so that is pretty much it so yeah just write uh, writing everything down evaluating on the manifold m which is of dimension n so basically yeah phi is of dimension k and then n minus k both of them add up to n so yeah that is what we wanted to write